Hey folks, my name is Jen, and today this will hopefully be the beginning of a mini vlog. So we're now into the fall, and just to get into that fall mood, and also because I have a weekend where we have some stuff going on, but not like a crazy amount of things going on, I figured this would be the perfect time to do like a little weekend reading vlog. So we have a couple of plans. We're going to be doing a little bit of work um, on the basement downstairs and I'm hoping that maybe we'll be able to go for a walk at some point at the park this weekend but otherwise I want to spend the weekend um, being cozy or cozy Ish. The temperatures haven't been too bad. It's actually been kind of nice and cool in the evenings, but it's been up until like 85, 86 degrees during the day, so it's, you know, um, but I'm hoping to at least have nice days and or at least cozy evenings um, to snuggle up with some tea and some good reading. So here is what I would like to read not like a crazy amount because these are indeed graphic novels or most of them are anyway um, and honestly I have read three of these um, but the other two I have not read. <laughs> First up I would like to reread Sam's Tea Party by Ray Raymana Yee. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I just reread it again last year and made like a video about it when I talked about like my favorite um, fantasy novel and my favorite graphic novel. This was the novel that I talked about. I love this book. This is about a girl named Laura and she doesn't really want to grow up. She's actually kind of afraid of growing up and She's very like creative and imaginative and kind of quirky and she's into all like kinds of like very imaginative or spooky things and she ends up uh, summoning and then um, becoming friends again with the ghost that lives in her house and this is just such a beautiful story and the art is beautiful. So. I'm sure you'll be seeing more and hearing more about this, but I wanted to do a reread because it's fall time, so I wanted all my like fall time spooky um, graphic novels to be read now. Another one is, I think I talked about this like a couple of years ago when I read it, um, but it is Ghosts by Raina Teljamir, and this is about two sisters, uh, what are their names, Katrina and Maya, they move with their uh, parents to this town, um, I guess because it's a little bit of a better um, area, a better climate overall for them or something. Um, her sister Maya, uh, that sister Maya has cystic fibrosis um, and so yeah, they're in this town, they're new there and this town is like obsessed with ghosts and um, they have like a big deal. I also yeah, they lost more toast, uh, basically like celebration that they do every year because this town is very connected with um, their loved ones who have passed on and Maya loves this but Kat is having a hard time with this because everything scares her and she's also very concerned um, about her little sister uh, passing. So this is about them kind of becoming a part of this town and like dealing with their demons, mostly cat demons, but um, yeah, so um, I remember this being pretty cute. This is one that, actually I completely forgot that I wanted it to be on my fall TBR. It's usually something that I read to get into the fall mood every year, um, or has been since I first read it, and it's Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. Uh, you guys know about this, I've talked about this a lot, this is pretty popular. Uh, two friends who work in a pumpkin patch. It's a pretty cool pumpkin patch. Um, this is their last Halloween working in the patch before they go off to um, college the next year. Uh, so they're trying to like have a night of shenanigans and no regrets basically and it's great. 
Um, and then the two ones that I haven't read yet, uh, one is Sheets, and this is by Brenna Thumler. I have heard that this is like very cute, but also smash your heart into a million pieces. Um, but this is about a girl who, uh, her little family is grieving because her mom passed away, I think not that long um, ago, and she's pretty much taken over trying to run her family's laundromat and make sure that they don't like lose it while her dad is just not able to deal. Um, so she is kind of dealing with her own grief and also trying to continue running the laundromat. And then you have a little ghost who winds up getting lost and ending up at the laundromat because he is confused by all the sheets and he thinks that maybe, you know, there's other ghosts there for it. it I don't know, I guess they strike up like a friendship and it's supposed to be like wicked cute. But like I said, break your heart into a million pieces. So I'm guessing uh, maybe it's going to be similar to <laughs> this one and I love this seance tea party so uh yeah there's the sheets and the last one this is not spooky or ghost or halloween related but i don't know it's something that i think feels very fall time but also very springtime but i figured it would be great to read around now anyway and it's the anne of green gables um manga that i got recently um so, Anne of Green Gables, in case you don't know somehow, uh, is by Ella Montgomery, and it's about a orphan girl who gets adopted by this brother and sister. Um, they actually wanted a boy to help them around the farm, uh, but they decide to keep her anyway, even though um, the sister is like, I don't know anything about raising a girl, but alright then. Um, but it's just very sweet, because it's about her, she's desperately wants to love and be loved and it's about her and this found family between the three of them becoming friends of other people and them like learning so much from her too and it's just it's a lot very nature close to and it's just really beautiful uh so that's the book so this is the manga version of that the manga classic and it's by Kuma Chan and Crystal S. Chan. And yeah, I think that this is going to be really cute. And I think everybody just looks really adorable in here. But that's everything I'm hoping to get to this weekend. Um, if somehow I have an amazing amount of time. Um, I was also contemplating doing or starting a reread of Patch Up of Horrors, which is a manga um, that I loved um, and have not read in several years, but um, I don't know if I'll be able to squeeze this into this vlog. That might be another vlog, or it might just be something that I binge at some point this fall too if I decide I don't want to read anything, I want to read manga. <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, cue me probably later tonight.
some work downstairs. I will show you images of what we we did. Um, got some stuff accomplished, so that was good. I finished two of the graphic novels last night, Pumpkin Heads, which was just so good. It's so the perfect read for ball. It really is like the perfect thing to use to jump into the fall months because like everything about it, the art, the colors within it, the food that they talk about is out of the fantastic pumpkin patch. I mean you guys have heard me talk about this graphic novel a lot so I won't spend that much time on it especially since that like it's gonna come up on my September wrap up eventually, but um, yeah, I had a really good time with my reread of that, and then I also um, did a reread of Ghosts uh, that I read a couple of years ago, and I did really like that as well. Um, I had a good time rereading it, and that one's also kind of cute. I really like the artwork in that. I know that I've marked more of Raina um books as things that I want to read in the future and I think I also marked that for Faith Erin Hicks too that I wanted to look at more of her work. Um, I've heard mixed things about Rainbow Rowell's other works so um, I haven't really dove into anything else of hers so far. I might. Um, but yeah, Ghost was, Ghost was a good time too. Um, I really like the town that the kids live in, in there, um, and, uh, I don't really know anyone with cystic fibrosis, but, um, from what I understand about it, it sounds like that, um, book was a fairly accurate, um, representation of what it's like, um, for for children with cystic fibrosis so and also I remembered when I was looking at my old review of it it was like I was just happy that it was um it was something different it wasn't yet another uh book about sick teens in in love and somebody is gonna probably die by the end of it kind of 
um, thing. It was like about um, sisters, family, and stuff like that instead, which was nice. Um, I mean, not that I've read those other books like that because I don't like really tend to seek out tear jerker books on purpose. It's pretty good reread. Um, I've got the other three sitting right here. I'm not exactly sure which one I'll dive into right now. I think I'm going to go with sheets. I think I'll dive into sheets right now. I do have to say though, flipping through this just a little bit, I don't know if I like the art style. <laughs> supposed to be a kid and she looks like she's 40. I don't know. I don't really like that art style that much, but it's kind of hot right now. It's pretty warm, um, but I'm hoping when it gets dark out it'll be a little cooler because we just got some brand new uh, fall tea to try out and I really want to settle down this evening, I think, with Ooh. Seance Tea Party and drink uh, this new fall tea, and I think that will be pretty nice, but yeah, it's a little warm for that right at the moment. <laughs> Since we last talked, um, we watched Rhett and Link's new Wonderful episode since we've last talked, which I don't know if anyone is a fan of Good Mythical Morning or Rhett and Link, but Wonderful is so weird, but I kinda, I kinda really love it. Um, and this episode made me cry, so, um, but anyway, we've done all of that. My hair is still wet. A little bit. I've just made some tea. It's caramel apple. Um, it's still really hot, so I can't drink it yet, but it smells great. Before I start on my reading, 
of Sans Tea Party, which I'm going to break into tonight. And I think I can get all the way through it before I go to bed. Um, and then tomorrow I'll read this manga, which I'm very excited about. Um, but before I do that, I'm all the way for my tea to cool. I figure that I could talk just a little bit about sheets. So I started reading this earlier. Um, sorry, if you hear any interesting noises, my husband is in the living room watching anime. And it's got like weird aliens and stuff in it. I don't, it's, it's some strange noises. But anyway, <laughs> I started reading this book. Um, I only intended to read, like, not even that much of it. I only intended to get, like, maybe, I don't know, like, part way through it or whatever, and then I was going to stop and go do something else because I also had a goal for this weekend that I didn't talk about, but my other goal for this weekend was to finish my reread of The Shining. Um, so then I can move on to other books that I want to get through, including um, Lone Women, which is still... Here, I'll show you. Girls, you were very honest a couple of weeks ago in showing your clutter. <laughs> I'll show you my uh, clutter so you can see or you are not alone in the clutter. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so as you can see, my messy, scary stack right here of my annotating basket, and then this is my copy of Alone Women, which you can see I'm not really that far into chapter 17. The chapters are very short, um, and I've got my all my colored pencils and pens. And my, uh, book that I keep track of all my reading stats in. They're all just sitting precariously over here. On my nightstand of doom. Formerly known as my nightstand of shame. No, it's still my nightstand of shame. Right now it's my nightstand of doom because, like, I have to clean everything. Um, but, yeah. I wanted to get through the rest of The Shining this weekend, too, because... I want to focus more on my other books because it's already part three through September. I'd only checked like, I don't know, one book off of everything. So, and I have a lot that I actually want to get through. So, um, I figured if I freed up my time that I spend reading The Shining, uh, then that will free me up for other things such as finishing Lone Women and uh, getting into some of my other books. A lot of rambling that normally wouldn't be in this vlog, so editing me will have fun later. But as far as sheets goes, like I said, I was only going to read like a little bit in this and then go back to The Shining and then maybe finish this tonight or save it to finish tomorrow. That was my plan. My plan for tonight was Dan's Tea Party and then maybe, yeah, like I said. But, uh, that didn't work out that way because I actually got, like, kind of invested in this book. Um, it actually read a lot quicker than I was expecting, I guess. And you know, on the outside of it, it sounds like a super cute, kind of heartbreaking story, and that's what I've mostly heard about this book. I feel like I'm too close to this. Hold on. Straighten it out a little bit. But, yeah, I felt like everything that I'd heard about this was that it was supposed to be super cute and kind of, like, a little bit heartbreaking, but heartwarming, and, like, it's about a girl who has recently lost her mother and she's trying to take care of like the family 
family laundromat that her mother cares so much about and take care of her family because her dad is just not with it and her brother is little and you know she's dealing with all of that but then there's also a lost little ghost that she befriends and I was like oh this is gonna be so super cute well that's how this was presented to me I guess um, and that was not exactly this full a lot it, it actually was a lot more than that and I did enjoy it uh, except for <laughs> a couple parts so the background look of it really cool like I like the whole background look of everything all of that colorful looks pretty cool this gorgeous love a good train ghosts love the ghosts ghosts are very cute uh, the people however I have to say um kind of wicked ugly not gonna lie I don't really like the artwork of the people like I said background colors um, ghosts yes the people not so much um, the art style reminds me a lot of what was that called Doonesbury I think I'm thinking of Dunes Doonesbury maybe uh, folks Millennials and Gen X and boomers hello welcome um, was it Doonesbury? It was like a, it was in the newspaper. It was a weekly comic. It would come out on Sundays in the funnies. And um, I think it also had like a daily one maybe, you know, in that small section in some of the newspapers that had like the daily comics. I think that was one of the ones. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. Um, yeah, this artwork, I'm probably getting it mixed up in my head, but it just kind of reminds me of that. It's just nobody looks good. Every single person is kind of ugly. <laughs> um, and the kids look like they're 40 years old. <laughs> I'm trying not to be insulting to this artist, but it's just, there's nothing wrong with that if that's something that you like and every art style is valid, um, it's just not my particular cup of tea. That's something that kind of like detracts from my enjoyment of this just a little bit. Um, and then there were a couple of... Hi, we're getting a cat visitor. Hi Banks. Um, we there's a couple of like character things in here like interactions between characters that struck me as completely out of left field and then there's also uh, a couple of things that happen um, one of which was I mean that's cool that it happened but it, it is also kind of like but why but why um, it just didn't exactly make sense. It felt like that decision should have been flushed out more. I don't want to share because I don't want to give any spoilers. And then there's also a character in here, actually two characters in here, and one's definitely just like a total Karen, and that's like kind of whatever I guess. The other one is like so highly Delulu. <laughs> um, he is almost cartoonishly evil and it was just it not only cartoonishly evil but like his interactions and this kid is just like I don't know I mean maybe I was a brat growing up it's highly likely um but like if an adult was speaking to me in this manner were acting this way to me, I would have told them exactly what to do with themselves. <laughs> like, I I know everybody says the whole respect your elders bullshit, but like, I'm sorry, respect is earned, not given. Um, so, like, on the one hand, it's like, oh, he's a bad person, and that just kind of, you know, 
there has to be a bad person in a book, probably, usually. You have to have some type of antagonist, but he almost seems so over the top that it was to the point of ridiculousness. Like, picture... Picture the villain of the story in in some type of, like, Disney Channel movie who is so ridiculously over the top that maybe in a cartoon it would make sense, but in real life it doesn't translate so well. I know this is a drawn comic and that should make sense, but it doesn't really? I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling at this point. The point of the matter is, um, I didn't enjoy this as much as I thought I was going to, and I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> um, not that it's a bad story. I think overall it's a cute story, and I can see what Brenna Thumler was trying to do here. Um, with talking about grief and perseverance and, um, and everything, but I don't know. I also kind of feel like it didn't exactly hit the mark right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure that you'll hear more of my thoughts unless I've basically, I've probably just basically expressed all of them right now. <laughs> um, but you'll hear more about that in my September, like, wrap up. But yeah. She's mildly disappointing. Babies. So? You're gonna see this view because Binks is very confused right now and she doesn't seem to know <laughs> what she wants to do. She usually lays on my lap a little bit. I bean. Smell my tea? Does she have- she has a ghost friend? The ghost is haunting the house. As long as the ghost doesn't disturb us, I don't care. And then her dad jokes with her, don't get possessed. <laughs> I kinda love her parents, they're just so 
chill. <laughs> smash your heart into a million pieces and you're gonna be happy about that.
try. As it always does, I'm, I will tell you the thing that makes me cry. I will share with you the one part of it that always does it because I don't think it's a spoiler. It's very sweet. It is... Well, there's one part of it that happens afterwards, but I'm not going to share that because that's a spoiler. But Anne tells Matthew, so she's been adopted, you know, by the Cuthberts. And she tells Matthew Cuth Cuthbert, at this point she's about 15, 16, um, and she tells him, you know, because they'd originally wanted a boy and these two are getting older and the struggle around the farm and everything are a little harder uh, to deal with and she said, you know, if I had been the boy you sent for, I'd be able to help you so much now and spare you in a hundred ways, she says. Um, she wished that she could have been the boy that they had wanted, had looked for. And he said, I'd rather have you than a dozen boys. Um, and he calls her my girl. He says, my girl that I'm proud of. And every time, oh my god, every time, oh man, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Which, honestly, I think that fits for me. <laughs> I get more emotional at sweet things than I do at, like, some other things. I, I can't, personally, I can't handle compliments. So, maybe that's why I can't handle it when people say really sweet compliments and stuff to characters in books. I just can't deal with it. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I loved this. I finished reading this. I had a lovely time. Um, I did look up other manga classics in this series, and I think I do want to make it my goal to collect them all. Um, well, at least some of them. Uh, there are classics for um, Hamlet, Macbeth, um, and Alice in Wonderland. And, um, um, and Les Mis, which is chonky and depressing, so I've never planned to read it. It's never been something that I've wanted to read, but if I had the manga classic of those two books, I might actually be able to digest them. Because <laughs> I am still curious about them, but I'm just not curious enough to slog through all of that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so they have copies of those, and they have copies of, um, what, Jane Eyre, which I didn't like. Um, when I read that in high school, but I could at least give the manga classic a try maybe. Maybe I'd like it better if it was in a visual format as opposed to, um, literary one maybe. Um, the one I really want though, they have a Midsummer Night's Dream and they also have Scarlet Letter manga classic versions, which I really, I, I want to find both of those. So I think that would be pretty cool. But anyway, yeah, I, I finished that, I loved it. Um, and this has been just a fun little weekend of reading graphic novels and getting more in the, the fall mood. I'm really enjoying that, even though it is kind of, you know, warm out. It's in the 70s, so it's not like crazy warm, but yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this slightly unconventional-ish reading vlog. I don't think I really talked that much about the things I read, but this is just a simple little, you know, here's what this weekend was like and reading and stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed anyway. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books, um, and if you want more in-depth thoughts from me, I will have them in my September wrap-up um, when I get around to, the, I mean it's still September, so sometime in October you'll hear about that. Uh, but anyway, yeah. And if you have any more graphic novels, like um, whether spooky ones, perfect for fall, or um, any any others just because, let me know down below because I am always up for finding uh, more fun graphic novels to read. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>